Massachusetts emergency alert system this morning, Saturday, the 23rd. I typically save videos like this until October. The spooky scary side of Fallout 4, a guide on how to make your game more of a horror experience. And although at the time of posting, October is just over a month away, just recently a ton of spooky scary mods have come out for Fallout 4. Several key or fundamental mods that will make this game a true to form and proper horror experience. And in this video, I wanna showcase some of these recent mod releases that you should almost certainly download because they will terrify you. And they're without a doubt a great justification to actually start a new playthrough. If you guys enjoy the content, you can leave a like or subscribe, but first and foremost, let's take a look at Grim. So some of you guys may remember Grim, as I originally covered this one late last year, as it was an early release stage. But earlier in August, it did get its full public release, so you can now download Grim for yourself and experience what is the most comprehensive and just largest horror overhaul ever for Fallout 4. So just to briefly summarize, Grim will affect the visuals, weather, sounds, weapons, enemies, and even add in some new quests in Fallout 4. And to go over first, one of the simplest and most obvious aspects of this mod, just first and foremost, it has a visual change to the game. There is a standalone ENB that you can use with Grim, and you are supposed to use with Grim, and I think if you're trying to get the full experience, you should do that. The ENB definitely gives you much darker tones, but also shifts with quite a bit of customizability, as with this ENB, you could actually toggle several different on-screen effects effects or filters to actually change the way things look in a substantial way. And for some of these, it's pretty cool. We found footage look that can definitely give you some spooky scary vibes in Fallout 4 if you're creating content, definitely a cool aesthetic, and really different tones of darkness if you just want pure and straight dark and horror, or if you want something a bit lighter or some different vibes that you've probably seen in other forms of media. There's also a few presets in game you can use with the ENB or independent of it that will also give the game an overall just different visual look. And although the visuals are a core and big part of this, at points limiting your visibility, especially at nighttime when some of the monsters come out, the actual creatures and monsters you do encounter are also a core part of this, the changes it brings to Fallout 4's world. This mod is highly modular, so after downloading it, there will be an item where you could tweak several of these settings and actually enable something known as the curse. The curse will affect you and affect your world. Dark witches have cursed you, and as a result, you're going to have different things things occur to your character, visual altercations in Fallout 4's world overall, that in the sense that sometimes you'll see things that don't make a ton of sense, but also lead to things coming after you. Many monsters now will inhabit your Fallout 4 world and you'll find them all over, in particular at nighttime if you stay off the beaten path. And this is an interesting one because it's a core part of the grim experience and I also don't want to spoil it. Many of these creatures have unique characteristics to them. If you do something to them, even some that will follow you in a neutral way, they will react. And it's horrifying because there's no big guide as to what each of these do. It's just a lot of times you'll be playing the game, walking around at night in the dark with just the light of your flashlight guiding you. And you might see something that you've never seen before. And you're not even totally sure how it's going to react to you. But even outside of that, you also can encounter some of the more familiar features that you've seen in other forms of media and now will inhabit Fallout 4's world. But one of the most horrifying parts of Grimm overall is actually in the audio and music. This mod does feature Feature five hours of new original soundtrack, as well as a ton of self composing based weather and a soundtrack system. So, more or less, at points, once something happens in game, whether it be a creature detecting you, enemies attacking you, or even the weather changing or popping up, there will be an audio indication of this. The music will gradually build up in the background and really define the mood.
playing this with headphones on is probably one of the scariest ways you could play Fallout 4, especially if you play in something like survival where you could actually die pretty quickly. And when it comes to this stuff, although I can try and describe it to you or describe the horror I've felt while playing it, I think it's just a lot better if you hear it for yourself. The music and audio from this mod is easily one of my favorite parts. It's what really separates it from the rest. There are a lot of mods that add in scary or creepy features or make the game darker and spookier. But the way this mod ties it all in together really sets it on another level. Even further, of course, you are now cursed. And as a result of this, from time to time, you may get pulled into an other world, which is more or less going to be a different version of Fallout 4's Commonwealth where the creatures and music and sounds are turned up to 11 and the horror is on full display. I don't want to spoil too much around this one, but when it happens, you'll definitely know it, and you'll have to make your way to a tree of life to escape this area. And really, that's only a brief overview. Even outside of all of that, there's a ton more in the way of new weapons and mechanics, and even some new armors. Grim has an underlying story to it, so there are several quests that you are meant to complete to free yourself from this curse. And there's even some special weapons that are more effective against some of these new creatures that pop up, or even unique weapons that drop from some of these new and unique creatures. But overall, it really is a complete package. If you're looking for one mod you could download, or one mod plus one ENB to download, to make Fallout 4 horrifying and terrifying, this is it. There are hours of enjoyment to be had here, tons of new and unique enemies, and a lot of surprises, things you will not expect. I honestly think one of the best ways to experience Grim is just download a few of your favorite weapon mods and just play it almost blind and figure it out as you progress because it is terrifying and some of the surprises are pretty unique and special. But speaking of downloading some of your favorite weapon mods, some new weapon mods to recently come out that I think will go great with Grim and you actually saw me using in the background. First up, we do have the Mark 17 Mark 20 project, which will add in the highly customizable and probably pretty familiar rifle into Fallout 4. And the customization with this one is not to be taken lightly, as you can really change it from a full-on long barrel DMR to something a bit more compact. You have all kinds of different scopes, sights, and even things like under barrel or over barrel attachments you can apply. This mod takes full advantage of the rail system and weapon customization system in Fallout 4, but also just feels fitting. I feel like it's something you've probably seen in zombie movies past. Download this, kit it out with some of your favorite attachments, and you're ready to take on some of those new monsters from Grimm. But a separate weapon mod that also is immensely fitting, at least in my eyes, is the Red Army PPSH-41. So I'm sure I speak for many of us when I say that associating zombies or horror with the PPSH is something that we grew up with. And that of course is in reference to Call of Duty World at War zombie mode. And as I saw just recently the PPSH to come out and I was covering a bunch of horror mods, it just felt like it fit so well. Getting to mow down zombies or other creatures yet again with this very familiar and fantastic weapon. So in Fallout 4 it's pretty simple, it looks great, and it does have have some customizability options, some scopes and sights that do modernize it, as well as a few barrel attachments or extensions, but really it's a high rate of fire weapon that allows you to mow down big groups of enemies very quickly, and it sounds and looks great, and that's really what I wanted from this. I don't really think it needs much in the way of attachments to be cool, just in its raw form, it's a ton of fun to use and very, very useful. One of the double-edged swords around Grim for Fallout 4 is that it is so all-encompassing. It's amazing in that you can download just one mod or or one mod and a few weapon mods and have a totally overhauled Fallout 4 experience, but at the same time, if you want to play more traditional
traditional Fallout 4 makes it difficult. So another mod to just get a public release, and actually that recently got some updates, is the Whispering Hills mod, adding in several fundamental features of Silent Hill into Fallout 4. So many of you are probably familiar with this one. It actually has been released for a while on Bethesda.net, but it just made its Nexus debut, which for PC users is easily the most popular platform, but even further, just recently got some pretty large updates. So even if you are familiar with past iterations or versions, the most recent one does contain a few goodies that you'll probably want to download it. One of the first things you'll notice with Whispering Hills is that it'll coat the Commonwealth in a dense fog. This will highly limit your visibility, making it so you just can't really see that far at all. But at the same time, make it so as some of the creatures do attack you or approach you, it does have more of a surprise element to it. And that's really the other major part of this mod. The wide variety of new creatures from the Silent Hill universe that now will be scattered throughout Fallout 4's Commonwealth. If you played the Silent Hill games, many of these will be familiar to you. You'll be able to encounter things like siren heads and mumblers for several of the locations through throughout Fallout 4's Commonwealth, the typical inhabitants have been replaced with now characters from Silent Hill, making them far scarier and spookier to explore and experience. As scary as Fellow Ghouls can be, some of these new creatures are far, far more terrifying. But even outside of that, you actually may at points also get dragged into the other world with this one. And this is where it really transitions us into the audio segment of Whispering Hills, as it's also huge for this mod. Sometimes as you're adventuring throughout Fallout Force Commonwealth, and this is actually an adjustable chance, you will hear sirens in the distance, and you'll notice you're starting to get sucked into the other world, which effectively means hordes of these new enemies are going to begin attacking the Commonwealth. And really your best bet is to make your way to a settlement as fast as possible unless you have the firepower to fight off these foes. And this is terrifying, as nearly all of the enemies in this mod do have unique sound characteristics to them, and the mod overall adds in some of the Silent Hill soundtrack to Fallout 4 soundtrack. But in particular with some of those enemies, exploring at nighttime or in the dark and just hearing the noises they make really gets you terrified. One of the best examples of this is the Siren Head himself, which honestly with this one, I think the video will just speak for itself on what exactly this guy does. This is a message from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Emergency Alert System. So although all of that is pretty terrifying in its own right, and there are several enemies I didn't even really cover there, there's also a new underground segment you could find in the Parsons State Insane Asylum, wherein you could actually go to the home of Pyramid Head, and as you're venturing through this new transitioned or mysterious world, you'll find some interesting things. I don't want to spoil it, but it's a cool thing to experience for yourself, and if you take something from this particular area, you may have some of these creatures that you encounter only there follow you into the overworld. Any further, if you really want to terrify yourself, this mod is fully supportive of Fallout 4 VR. Honestly, between Grim and Whispering Hills, each of the mods have their own unique strengths and weaknesses. Grim is definitely much larger and all-encompassing, so if you are looking for a complete experience, that's the direction to go in, but if you just want something to augment or add a bit more of a fear factor to Fallout 4, but still being pretty significant in its effects, Whispering Hills is definitely more up that alley. But of course, with Whispering Hills, you also need some more weapons to take on the wide variety of additional creatures added with this one, and what better than a good pump-action shock gun with the Mossberg 500. So really with this mod, I feel like what makes it so good is that it's just a good pump action shotgun. Like it does everything right. It probably looks pretty familiar. The Mossberg features a wide variety of customization options. You could do a full tactical rail system or something a bit simpler and classy. And although the customization is pretty cool, of course, another key aspect of shotgun mods is what kind of shells you are loading in. And this mod has basically everything you could ask for in that regard also. Slugs, birdshot, buckshot, 
Shot and Dragon's Breath and even a few others. But really, I think the reason this is such a popular mod is one, it looks really good between the animations, the actual textures and visuals of the gun overall. Even further, it has built in support for bullet counted reload. So if you shoot once, you're only going to reload one shell, not go through the long and tedious reload process. And even further, there is an ammo switcher. So you can switch the ammo this gun is using with shell type on the fly, which also is pretty cool. And it really is a great option when taking down hordes of enemies you could encounter between Grim or Whispering Hills. But something that may be just a bit more effective in taking down hordes of enemies is the Rising Storm 2 M60. Another new mod for Fallout 4 that probably looks pretty familiar to many of you. It's another one that's pretty simple. There's only a few customization options with this one, things like a bipod, barrel extensions, or lengths, but otherwise it is a fully functioning with animations and custom sounds M60 in Fallout 4. And it just sounds and looks great. I mean, just take this clip where I'm just mowing down groups of people. How do you not want to download this after that? Fallout 4 has a real issue with heavy weapon mods, including Fallout 4's modding scene. There just isn't a wide variety of heavy weapon options in game or even in mods you could download right now that are this high quality. So although it's not the most unique or customizable weapon in the world, it does everything it does pretty well. And for me, it's definitely something I'll be keeping around in my load order. But then one other mod that is almost certainly going to give you some nightmares and can pair well with some of the other mods in this list are the Feral Ghoul Bite Skills, and really the whole series of grab skill mods from the mod author LZ. So these mods are quite simple. More or less, for many of the enemies in Fallout 4, when they kill you, there is a unique custom animation that will play that will kind of knock you down to simulate you falling to your death. What this mod will do is actually integrate that as a percent chance to occur as an enemy attacks you, not only when they kill you. So for example, you may have seen a Feral Ghoul do this to you, but now with the Feral Ghoul Bite Skills, it won't kill you, you'll just get back up after being mauled by a feral ghoul. So whenever a feral ghoul hits you, there is a percent chance they're actually going to do a much larger bite or hit. As I mentioned before, this doesn't only apply to the feral ghoul, although that is definitely the most popular application. If you wanted a reason to hate Assaultrons even more, that's another option with this, or even the Rad Scorpion stab skill is particularly terrifying and actually probably has the coolest in-game animation, and all of these will knock you down for a short duration after, although this mod author also also has a mod for getting up faster, which could be kind of handy if you're getting frustrated by these. But this makes exploring at night terrifying. Imagine you're walking through the dark or just walking around in an interior, and all of a sudden a feral ghoul gets you and actually holds you down for a moment. Then a ton of other feral ghouls are already there from right around the corner, and you might be having a very bad day and absolutely terrified. In many ways, it makes each of these enemies have an additional tool in their arsenal, and that tool can be terrifying because it doesn't just kill you, it just kind of holds you there for a bit. And also, one of the cool aspects of this, since many of the enemies added in with Whispering Hills and even Grim do use the Feral Ghoul AI, they will also be able to do this to you, hold you down using this animation. But if all of that wasn't enough, one final weapon mod that will probably be a definitive choice throughout all of these mods is the AKM Complex, as what this adds in is probably one of the most customizable AK mods for Fallout 4. Adding in an AK like this, but then also like this, and then that. So what this does in effect is adding the AKM platform as a base, but then all of the various variants you've probably seen in media or even used in other video games, you can almost certainly customize this particular weapon into. Even someone specifically from other video games, like it having a unique version that we could see from Metro Exodus. If you want some more tactical versions, this has that available, or even some heavier versions like an RPK or just attaching a drum magazine to something. You could change caliber types. This mod actually has cool functionality in that. You can edit it to have things like a higher capacity round or a higher velocity round that comes at other trade-offs such as to range or perhaps having more ammo capacity but a smaller caliber going through it. And really the cool part about this one is it does also feature custom sounds and animations. So when you stack that on top of all the customizability features, I think for me it almost becomes the definitive AK mod because although there are several other AK based mods out there, this mod could more or less be customized into one of those other mods. In many ways it feels like the Swiss army knife of AK mods for Fallout 4 and probably the last AK mod you'll ever need. And it is certified great at killing zombies, so it does just about everything you're going to want. There's been a lot in the way of Fallout 4 mods lately, so hopefully this video served as a good way to keep up to date with some of the more modern weapons, but also make your game scarier. There's been several options in that category. And really, in fact, there's been so many new mod options as of late. I have several other videos with specific themes planned over the next couple of weeks. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Hopefully you found it informative. But until next time, 
I hope to see you all later.